So tonight I brought another koan. I've been talking about koans from Dogen's collection. And again, not because I know anything about koans, but because these stories speak to me. And when I find one that speaks to me, I try to kind of make sense of it or, or I try to uh, dissect it a little bit for myself. This one is case 25. It's called The Master's Portrait. It's very short, very simple. Zen master Di Zhang held a memorial service for his teacher. He invited Bao En. When Bao En looked at the altar, there was no picture of Di Zhang's teacher. So he asked, do you have a portrait of your master? Di Zhang folded his hands, bowed and said, look. Bao En said, there's no picture. Di Zhang said, it's clear that you don't see it, but it's here. This is a really common setup. Just a few weeks ago, when I was in Los Angeles, we were doing memorial services. We were not only marking the 100 years of Soto Zen in North America, but we were marking 700 years since the death of Keizan Zenji. And so on the altar, there are big pictures of Keizan Zenji and his name is written out. This is how you do it. And if you do a memorial service for uh, a family member, it's the same. There's a photo of grandpa right there on the altar and then you do the service. And so Di Zhang is holding a memorial service for his teacher, invites another monk, and the monk comes and says, hey, where's the picture? Di Zhang says, look. And the monk says, no, I don't see it. And Di Zhang says, it's here, but you can't see it. I didn't go looking for this koan, but I found it uh, on Father's Day. And, and it spoke to me on that level. This is a koan about ancestry. It's a koan about connection. And, and we can understand it, or we can read it first in a kind of simple way which is that Dizang inherited the Dharma. He received the Dharma through his teacher. And so on one level, it's just simply the important thing was transmitted and it's still here because Dizang is still here. And Bao En is saying, I, I don't see him. And in a way, Dizang is saying, he's right here. Or we can extend that further to the whole room, right? That everything that I do, everything that's happening here is permeated through with my teacher. My teacher is here. My teacher is so present for me in everything I do, in everything I think, in every breath that I breathe. I don't need a painting of him. I see him all the time. And if you looked, maybe you could see him too. That's one way to understand this. And it's a, it's a kind of beautiful way to think about lineage. Everyone being present maybe especially one's own teacher, that they're right there in the room. But there's more to this, I think. One part is that while Dizong didn't put up a painting of his teacher, he held a memorial service for his teacher. 
he did. So even while he's saying he's right here, he's also saying, I can step outside of that and acknowledge him. That's complicated. So he isn't completely uh, owning his teacher. Right? There's something more. There's still this impulse to step away from the teacher, to face the teacher, to bow to the teacher. Somehow. That's interesting. We can explore this on that kind of lineage level. And that's why I say it spoke to me on Father's Day, because of course our parents are here. Our grandparents are here. Their parents are here. Genetically, yes, but in so many more ways than that. A generation teaches a sense of humor to another generation, which teaches a sense of humor to another generation. And we find ourselves laughing at something and we don't know why. It may go back centuries. The reason why that joke is funny to us and another joke isn't. We carry the ones that we know but they carried the ones that we don't know, which means we carry them all. In East Asia, where Zen took root, there's been a criticism for the last century or so, ever since people in the West kind of discovered what was going on, that too much of that tradition is about what you know, what people would have called a uh, hundred years ago, ancestor worship. It's the memorial services. It's the very thing described in the koan. My teacher, a lot of his role was to perform memorial services. He has a calendar on the wall from day one to day 31. It never changes month to month, though he has to do some rearranging on, in like February. He knows that on the first of every month, he visits maybe five houses, the same five houses, because someone died on the first. He's going to go to that house and he's going to perform a memorial service for that person. Uh, and it might be you know, 10, 15 minutes. He goes in, he finds the family altar, he chants a little bit, they serve him a cup of tea, everybody talks about the weather. And then he gets up and he goes to the next house and he does it again. It's a big part of his job. Some days it's 10 houses. He does this day in and day out for decades. And the next person to inherit the temple will just pick up the same schedule. That's really confusing if we're not used to it. Especially when we get into conversations about no self, conversations about what happens when we die. Because what is this? When you offer incense to your great grandfather at the altar, what are you doing? What are you imagining is happening? Are you imagining that your great grandfather somewhere out there is receiving that offering? Are you inviting your great grandfather in? Are you communicating? Are you learning? Are you giving? Are you fulfilling some sort of responsibility? And if so, what and why? It's confusing here, but in a sense, it's just as confusing there because if you ask each house, What's going on when the priest comes in and offers incense and chants? They'll say something else. 
some of them will say, oh, no, our great grandfather is here. And others will say with absolute sincerity, I have no idea. But my mom had the former priest coming all the time to do these ceremonies. And when she passed away, we just kept doing it because this is how you do it. And it feels nice, but I don't know. What's inviting about it though, what is I think worthy of our investigation, even if it doesn't make sense on the surface, is that there is a regular acknowledgement of the people who came before. And whether we're saying that they are literally in the room as a presence, or just saying that they're here, because how could they not be here? We're taking time to notice that we come from something. And when we consider that deeply, we get to the part of this that to me is the most compelling. It's not about lineage. It's not about someone inheriting something from someone else in that kind of beautiful, poetic way. It's that Dizang, who is saying, look, my teacher's here, is also saying, I'm not really here. I'm not really here in the way that we usually imagine an I to be here. Because I'm not an independent, autonomous being. I'm not free of what came before me. And right now we're talking about my teacher. And so I'm saying my teacher is here. But also he's speaking to Bao En and he could just as easily say, and Bao En, you were here before you got here, because I know you, and I've met you, and you mattered enough to me that I invited you here today, so you've already rubbed off. And when you leave the room, you will still be here with me. When we really let this in, something starts to dissolve. And we might start by looking at family because family is so obvious and because we can look at the way that we smirk and find a photograph from three generations back of someone smirking in exactly the same way and kind of pause in awe of that. But if you came home today in a good mood because there was a dog you saw on the sidewalk it was just especially cute, then you brought that dog home and the dog's owner. That person that you had a crush on in junior high is part of who you are. And so that person is here. That person is part of how you move and how you think. And I'm saying all this like it's fun, and we can feel this gratitude for the wonderful, the myriad beings in our lives. But the fact is that some of them we might wish weren't there. There might be people who affected us along the way in ways that hurt. We might have qualities that we can trace to certain fears, to certain disappointments or in the case of family, to things that we were taught through repetition. And now we find ourselves repeating them and we wish we wouldn't, but we do. So many people have this experience where they become impatient with their children for the first time and the thing that comes out of their mouth sounds exactly like one of their parents. They say the thing that they thought they would never say in the tone of voice that they thought they would never use. We don't have to frame this 
in a happy way. But we also can't frame it as a burden because there's no alternative. We are who we are and who we are is permeable being, constantly changing, constantly being affected and then by extension, constantly affecting. I had the privilege to perform a wedding ceremony on the weekend, and this is what we talked about. That in the vow to live with another person, you accept the responsibility, not only that you are going to change who they are, but that they are going to change who you are. That there is a constant interplay. And understanding that your kindness is going to make them more kind. And that your anger is going to make them angrier. And that their weird favorite sandwich that you think should never have existed 10 years from now will be delicious. because we're constantly soaking it in, absorbing the beings around us, and then hopefully taking responsibility for that. Even when I say that, I hear it, and I know it sounds as if I am taking responsibility for them. I don't know how to get out of that trap linguistically. Because it's really just all of us taking responsibility for all of us. We're so much less and we're so much more than we think moment to moment. So much less solid. So much bigger. When Bao En asks where the picture is, and Di Zhang says, it's here. It's kind of cute. But really, Di Zhang is saying, everything that you understand about reality is wrong. Now let's do this memorial service together. And I'll stop there.